Oh, this is great. Uh, recently, I threw up on the street in Washington, D.C. That's exciting, right? Our nation's capital. That's not a big deal. I throw up in the street a lot. I like to drink, and I get hungover. You know when you're hungover and you're like, I am definitely gonna vomit today. But I wonder if I can make it to breakfast first. So I rolled the dice. I was incorrect in my assertion. I know this because I made that sound that you make when you're definitely gonna vomit. You know, it's, when there's no decision left, it sounds like this. Uh, That's a real problem. Uh, which is the great thing about the human body, too. Not only is vomiting disgusting, we get to look like a hungry baby bird right before him. <laughs> Feed me, mother! It's a British bird, perhaps a nightingale. Uh, what was different about this time is right as I began to vomit, like right as I was like, I turned and I made eye contact with a woman sitting across the street at a Starbucks. And then I held eye contact as I vomited. <laughs> Which is terrible. Uh, for her, mostly. Because I feel so bad for her, you know, because her morning started off successfully. You know, she's not wearing the clothing she was in the night before. She's up on time. She's probably thinking to herself, well, another successful morning. Sipping a frappe latte. What do they always say? Early to bed, early to have the worms in your house. I'm not very good at cliches. <laughs> or at least the person impersonating me isn't. It's a real point of insecurity for him. <laughs> but at least I won't have an awkward interaction with him. What's going on with that baby bird of a man over there? <laughs> then she just sees me like, bleh, bleh, bleh. I also walk like a zombie when I vomit. <laughs> but I feel bad for her, you know? Because what's going on in her reality? She's got to go home and call her friends, right? <laughs> she doesn't know the context. She's called, she goes, oh my god, you guys. I was so ugly this morning. I made a man vomit. <laughs> I don't want her to think that, you know? Right, wouldn't you feel bad? Some of my best thinking is done in my shirt that says, Idaho, Udaho. <laughs> I was thinking about how language truly is elastic, isn't it? Even changing one letter can change the semantics of a word. And then I had a totally separate thought. I was thinking about how our perception of our own bodies is much more important than other people's perception of our bodies. Is that true? And I was thinking about that when I was wearing my shirt that says, this ain't a beer belly, it's a gas tank for a fuck machine. <laughs> so I guess what I'm saying is t-shirts can tell a lot about a person and how they think. For instance, I saw a guy, he was wearing a shirt that said, warning, choking hazard, and there was an arrow pointing down. And that tells you a few things about that guy. One, he's got a killer sense of humor, am I right? <laughs> Two, he's concerned with other people's safety. That's a bonus. And three, he's a date rapist. <laughs> so don't talk to him. I feel like those are the guys that, uh, that, that write bathroom graffiti. I don't know how many of you are enthusiastic about bathroom graffiti. Um, <laughs> I think it's nice for somebody to take time out of what they're doing to write something for us to read while we're doing what they were doing. <laughs> but I find it's often exaggerated, you know? It's hyperbole for effect. So I carry a Sharpie marker and I'll add to it underneath um, to make it more truthful. So you know, somebody will write like, Florida State sucks. And underneath I'll write, mostly because of budgetary restrictions. <laughs> you know, or they'll write, Sarah's a slut. And underneath, all right, because her parents didn't give her enough attention, she seeks out male attention in negative ways. <laughs> That's true. Or somebody will write, for a good time, call this number. And I'll cross out the number and put mine, and then I'll cross out the word good and put weird. 
and then I'll cut out two little eye holes right above it. So when they're finished reading and I just pop up and go. <laughs> not a very cool guy. I'm really not. I know this because what do cool guys do when they get a, a Corona, huh? What do they do with the lime? They'll press the lime down into the bottle and they turn the bottle upside down so the lime slowly floats upwards to the bottom of the bottle. And by the time they turn it back around, usually they're having sex with a woman. <laughs> I always try and do that. I'm like, oh yeah, you're going back to nursing? So hold on a second, I got a corona. So. <laughs> and whenever I ask advice about how to kind of act more smooth in certain situations, people always give me similar advice. Do you ever have anybody say to you, uh, just do your thing? Just do your thing, man. Don't worry about it, TJ. Just do your thing. Just do your thing. I don't want to do that. Because my thing is this. That's a weird thing. Don't tell me to do that. That's not going to help me in any situation. <laughs>